So we have this person brought in and it's just an insert. It's not part of anything else and you have to say, why is this in here, right? I, it, in other words, there's nothing leading up to it, there's nothing leading away from it, it just makes it a statement as if this is the way it is. So we'll talk about Melchizedek real quickly. Does he, does it say anything else about him before this account? Okay, and I'm going to assure you that it says nothing else about him after this account until it's referred to in the Psalms by King David. Okay, so what, is that, what does that tell us about Melchizedek? What can you determine about Melchizedek based on the fact that he's mentioned these three verses, not before and certainly not after, all the way up until the Psalms? He's special. He's special. Okay, there's one. Now, let me ask it, it uh, another question. Does it mention his birth? No. Okay, no birth. And it doesn't mention who his ancestors. ancestors. It, no ancestors, okay? What they always say. Right? No ancestors, okay? So he has no genealogy. He has no birth record. He has he's special in who he is because he's he's only mentioned here. So all of these things and we can infer a million other things about this particular person. But this is what, when we go to the Psalms, let me see if I can find which Psalm it's in. Um, if you have the reference, uh, 110? Okay, thank you. We're get, real quickly, we'll go to Psalm 110, and we'll read what it says. This is King David writing about Melchizedek. And it says here, um, we'll just start with the beginning, because... Jesus actually cites this psalm to the Pharisees when he asks a question. He says, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies a foot, your footstool. Okay, so the Lord is all capitals, right? What is that? What, what does that mean? Yes. All capitals, it's Jehovah. Yud, He, Vav, He. Okay, and then the next one says, The Lord said to my Lord, which is capital, all capital, small, what is it? Capital. Capital and small, okay, which we talked about before is the word Adonai, always referring to God, but not in the sense of using the divine name. But anytime Adonai is used, it's always referring to God. So the Lord, Jehovah, said to my Lord, obviously deity, because it would be the only time in the Bible that deity is not used with this word, which it, 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 certainly he is speaking of de deity. So, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies uh, your footstool. So, Jesus brought this particular verse up, questioning them. If David said, the Lord, Jehovah, said to my Lord, and it's obviously God. It's nobody else but God because of the way that Jesus constructs a sentence. We know it already, but Jesus confirms it. The Lord said to my Lord, said it my... Well, if this is David saying, my Lord, this person, my Lord said to this person, then who is he? Right? He's asking the question. If he is this person, then who is he? And the people couldn't answer the question. It's, it's quite apparent that he is speaking about divinity. Okay? The Lord said to my right, my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Now, how I've never asked the Jehovah's Witnesses how they get out of this. But he is applying it to himself. How on earth could Jesus be anything but deity when the Old Testament speaks of both of these as being deity? Okay. Anyway, um, uh, so it will go on. The Lord uh, shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. It's speaking of the person that's going to rule. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power and the beauty of holiness from the womb of the morning you have the dew of your youth. The Lord Jehovah has sworn and will not relent you are a priest forever on the order of Melchizedek. Okay, so this person, Lord, L small o r d, which is Adonai, this person is a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Remember, he doesn't have any birth, he has no ancestors, and there's no death recorded, which I didn't mention. There's no death recorded. This is saying, doesn't matter if Melchizedek actually died or not. That's not the point. The point is that David is referring to this and it's saying that there is no birth recorded, there is no death recorded, therefore he is an eternal priest according to the Bible. Okay, do you understand? It doesn't matter if he literally is. 
It just matters that that's the way the Bible presents him. He's not a person like Aaron who was born, became this old, became the high priest, eventually died and was buried up on this mountain, Mount Nebo, I think. Um, might be Mount Hor. Anyway, one of the two mountains and then uh, Moses was buried on the other. But um, this guy, because these things aren't recorded, is a picture of an eternal person and a high priest of God. If he's the high priest of God and he's this picture of a person that never is born and never died, then he is an eternal priest of the high uh, of God Most High. And he's also eternally the king of righteousness, and he's also the eternally the king of Salem. But in this particular thing, he is saying that this person is a picture of an eternal priesthood. Okay, now, if in fact David is saying that this person is a picture of an eternal priesthood, and who were the priests at the time of David? The Levites. The Levites, right. And then the high priests were the Kohanim, which were the sons of, of Aaron, who came from uh, Kohan, the son of Levi. Okay, so you have, uh, just so you know, this is, you, you'll see a difference between the Levites and the priests. Well, you got Levi is the father. He came from Israel or Jacob. Okay, Israel. And then you got Levi. And then from Levi, he's got three sons. He's got Kohath, Merari, and... Uh, uh, three sons. I'm not remembering the third one. Kohath, Merari, and whatever. Anyway, so Kohath or Kohen is the high priestly line. That's where Aaron came from. The other ones are Levites. They are not the high priestly class, okay? So when you see the name Kohen today, these are lots of Jewish people in the world named Kohen, C-O-E-H-E-N. They're actually descendants of this person, and they've proved that by DNA. They know that these people have carried the same name for thousands of years. They are of the sons of Levi, but particularly the high priestly division of them. Anyway, just so you know that this is when you see the term priests and Levites, they're all from the same father, but then there's a division below that, okay, high priests and others. Um, but if the Levites are the priestly class in Israel, and David says you're a priest forever on the order of Melchizedek, talking about somebody in the future, then what does that necessarily mean? Okay, David is here. Not only that, but it also means something else. David is here in time. We'll say this is uh, uh, before David, and then this is uh, later, this is after David. At the time of David, the Levites were were the priests, okay? From, we'll say from the time of Moses through David and all the way up to the time of Jesus, the Levites were priests, okay? He says, speaking of somebody else, David, speaking of this person, the Lord said to my Lord, yeah. you are a priest forever on the order of Melchizedek, okay? What does that mean about the Levites? Or what does it mean about Melchizedek, whoever he is speaking of? He is going to replace the Levites. They will be replaced. Do you see what... Is, he's saying, if in fact they have Levites already serving at the temple, these people are serving. And David says, you're a priest forever. These people come and they go, they live and they die, but somebody is coming who is a priest on the order of Melchizedek, a completely different order. This is the order of Levi, right? That means that the order of Levi is going to be done away with at some point, okay? That is what David is saying here. If, in fact, the Levites are going to be done away with and replaced by an eternal priest, a person who is obviously deity, who is it? Right? it? It is Jesus. And the funny thing is that the Jewish people couldn't see that. They couldn't see that. that no, they still don't. And that's why we're going to have a temple. We're going to have seven years of tribulation. They're going to get their Levites together because they've already got these people lined up in Israel to start temple worship again. They've picked out their Levites. They know who their high priests are. They're going to set up all of this stuff thinking that they are going back and, and reestablishing the old covenant, right? They're not. They, all that they are doing is setting themselves up for more woes until the time that Christ comes and takes care of business. All right, he comes back to his people. But these people have already been superseded, and they simply just don't know it. Melchizedek is a picture of an eternal priesthood. The Psalms say that you are a priest forever on the order of Melchizedek, and therefore it must be that somebody will replace the Levites. And that is mentioned... David knew he was talking about. 
David was prophesying. He was writing something. He was the the thing is not everything David wrote. I'm sure is in the Psalms. Okay. When he said the Lord says to my Lord. Right. He, How he knew. I don't know. He was under the inspiration of God. Whether he wrote it in a trance or whether he was just writing a poem. But, he wasn't thinking of a certain person. No, I don't think so. I don't think he knew who was coming. All he knew is that the Lord put this on his heart to say this thing. Just like a prophet. They speak the words of the Lord. But not everything that a prophet speaks goes into the Bible. I'm hungry isn't in the Bible. But certain things that they say become the word of God. And somehow God ensured that this particular psalm, maybe David wrote a million other songs. I don't know. We know that Solomon wrote, I think it says a, a thousand songs. Yeah. Only a couple of his psalms are recorded in the Bible. Okay. Somebody knew this is divinely inspired and they included it in the psalms. And this is the case as well. Jesus refers to this psalm confirming that it is, because we're Christians, we know that, that this is canon but even the Jews before the time of Jesus knew it because this was already in the Psalms however it happened whether he was just you know I don't know how this process happens with prophets but God speaks through them he breathes out his words through them and he uses their personality their writing style everything to put his words down on the paper and somehow it was preserved and recorded and then we can go real quickly to Hebrews chapter 7 we might as well just stick with this What's that? Seven. What's that? I got five, six. Uh, he's probably mentioned in five too, and then it's mentioned again in seven. Um, real quickly, we'll go. Seven, uh, oh, I'm sure a, a, a couple times he's mentioned it, but we'll go to five first, seeing as how that's your first reference, and we'll see what it says here. Uh, five. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we're talking about. Um, uh, so Christ did not. This is five five. Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest. He did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. That's from the second psalm, okay? As he says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. That's what we just read. King David, under the inspiration of God, said that you are a priest forever on the order of this person. Why the order? Because there's no genealogy mentioned. There's no death mentioned. There's no birth mentioned. It doesn't mean that he didn't live and die. We have no idea if he did or didn't. But it's simply saying that because nothing is recorded about this man, we are making a comparison to him. Do you understand that, Mary? Do you understand what I'm talking about? I, I don't want to confuse you. Do you understand what we're talking about? Okay. Um, it says here, um, uh, then in uh, verse 7, who in the days of his flesh, oh, um, this is speaking of Jesus again. Okay, uh, going down to... It's the last part of uh, uh, verse 9. Yes, and having been perfected, he became the author. This is, just so you all know, I've mentioned this a million times, this is one of the text verses. He became the author of eternal salvation. If we call on Jesus, we are eternally saved. There is no such thing as losing your salvation. It is not possible. Now, if somebody pretends to have called on Jesus, they're not saved at all. But if they have called on Jesus despite their failings, despite their weakness, despite their sin, which we all sin after coming to Christ, you are eternally saved. He became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him, called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Okay, now, what's that? I want to go back to the scripture uh, nine. When we get down nine? Where? What do you mean? One you just read. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so um, real quickly here, we're going to go to, to seven now. Well, 620 also talks about Let's see here, 620. Okay, yeah, right at the end it says, um, This hope we have is an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil. Uh -huh. Whoe'er the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become... So the New Testament is saying that this person that was prophesied in the Psalms is Jesus. No doubt about it. Now, what is the veil? It says later. Separated the most holy. Right, but it's a picture of something. What is a picture of? It's a picture of something, though. It says specifically in the book of Hebrews that the veil is his flesh. When the veil was torn, his body was torn, right? 
The veil is his flesh. Okay, where the forerunner is entered. So all of this is Jesus speaking about Jesus, is speaking about the veil. It's be everything that we read in the Bible eventually points to Jesus. But where the forerunner is entered for us, even Jesus having become high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The order of Melchizedek, no genealogy, no birth, no death recorded. And Jesus fulfills this promise. And that means, by necessity, he has replaced Levi. Okay, Ver, uh, chapter 7. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. 